Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Hey, Faith Positive Nation, Dr. Joey Fawcett here with another episode of Faith Positive Radio. Do you ever get these emails that say, Hi, I'm Prince Aruna from a country you've never heard of. And he's got, or am I the only one that gets these, right? And he's got like $3.52 million waiting to deposit in your bank account. And <laughs> does anybody get those besides me? I no, swear, those guys have that. yet to put any money in my bank account. I keep sending them my account information, and they have yet to do it, right? you got to send, <laughs> okay. send them your password, too. That's yeah. <laughs> all right, I really don't do it, but we all get those emails, and so uh, those phishing emails. And so there, there's this whole subculture out there that, that says when you are on the Internet or when you're doing anything out in cyberspace, you know, beware because somebody's watching you they're they're stealing your information they're hacking into uh, your accounts and things like that that are in other places i mean it's enough to make you a luddite you know which is oh by the way that's somebody who doesn't use technology of any kind right uh, but today's guest faith positive nation is an amazing resource for you in terms of knowing how to safely peruse the internet, how to do business online, the ways to protect yourself. And the incredible thing about it is he may be the only person I've ever met <laughs> who also does all of this from a faith perspective. Now I hope to goodness I didn't just offend somebody. I said that I've ever met. You know, a techno geek nerd in cybersecurity who's a Christian. I'm sure there are others out there, right? I just have yet to meet you. So please email Chuck at getpositive.today. Get yourself scheduled to be my guest. Uh, he's written two books, today's guest has. Uh, first one, Bull's Eye Breach. And of course, that word breach now, we all know, right? And the second one is Virus Bomb, which I think is an amazing title. Both books are published by our, my friend David Hancock with Morgan James Publishing. Chuck has uh, covers of both those books on GetPositive.today. If you just search by our guest name, you'll find them, and you can click right through and go to Amazon where, you know, lots of people buy stuff, I've heard. <laughs> okay, yeah. so today's guest, Faith Positive Nation, is none other than the Christian IT cybersecurity guru, Greg Scott. Greg, welcome to Faith Positive Radio, buddy. I'm delighted to have you on. Oh, thanks for having me. And even use the word guru in my name in the same sentence. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my basic philosophy is that an expert is somebody who knows that much more than the people they're talking to. There so you if you yeah. wrote a book called Bullseye Breach and another book called Virus Bomb, you got to know more about cybersecurity <laughs> than most all of us listening to this. But the cool thing is that you come about all of this from a faith perspective. And that's the part that really intrigued me and why I'm absolutely delighted to interview you today. So tell us, Greg Scott, about your work, what it is that you do to help protect people. Well, in my day, I, I do have a day job. In my day job, I, I have a, I have a, I guess you'd call it nine to five, but it's not really nine to five. I work for a software company, and um, we do we do the operating we do the open source operating systems for some of the biggest companies in the whole world, Absolutely. and I'm right in the thick of all of that. Hmm. So we we um, we we uh, if if you ever turn on a light switch or drive down a highway or go to a bank or make a phone call. The, the Red Hat software is in there someplace. And so, oh, yeah. I sat on a plane with an executive. We were flying back into Raleigh, which is where Red Hat uh, mm -hmm. was based. They were, Red Hat was bought by IBM recently, right? Yep. 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 Cool. Yep. Great company. Great company. So, yeah, they really run the world, right? <laughs> it's getting that way. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> man. That is cool. So you've got your own company besides working for Red Hat. You've got your own company, and so um, Faith Positive Nation, if you're interested, that website is dgregscott.com, mm -hmm. and if you're walking the dog or something, uh, you can go to Greg Scott, 
uh, just search for that at getpositive.today and uh, that link's right there for you, dgregscott.com. So tell us about what you do, uh, Greg. Well, that's during the day. During the day, mm -hmm. during the day, Red Hat job, during the night, lots of writing and lots of late nights. You know, Greg, what are you doing late nights in front of the computer? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to yeah. do something, right? Yeah, and I, and I, since, I'm, I, since you don't I get enough books. screen time during the day, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, I write books and I, you know, author research leads you into some strange places and, and, um, Sometimes I, that. yeah, they do. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get on social media and I'll just ask a few provocative questions just to get people's curiosity up. And then, you know, how do how would you how would you how would you hijack a truck full of explosives? And we just let the let the discussion run. Oh, is that where Usually, the title "Virus Bomb" came from? Mm -hmm. Well, that part question. of it. Part <laughs> of it. Yeah. The bomb part, right? Well, yep, that was the bomb part. And in, in in virus bomb. Some bad guys launched one of the biggest cyber attacks in history against the United States, and my guy, Jerry Barkley, he's a bald-headed IT contractor from Minnesota, and middle-aged, and, he, and, he, and, and um, he was, you know, Jerry was never president of anything in the high school, high school or college, and, uh -huh. and uh, never worked for the government. He's not part of any super secret agencies or anything. He doesn't have any superpowers. He's an ordinary guy. Uh -huh. But he knows his way around technology, and he knows when he's getting jerked around by people that shouldn't jerk him around. And and he's a Christian. Jerry Barkley's a pretty good Christian, and and he he knows how to think on his feet. And he's on his church drama team. And so he runs into Wait a minute. this. Hang on, let me get my head wrapped around this. An IT. <laughs> First of all, these are fiction books. I forgot to mention that. Oh yeah, these are all novels. <laughs> Bullseye yeah. Breach and Virus Bomb are fiction books. So these are stories, man. So you can really dig into them. But I'm trying to get my head wrapped around a ball headed IT cybersecurity guy from Minnesota who is on his church's drama team. And that that's that's mind <laughs> expansive for me. So full, I, full of contrast there, isn't it? All kinds all kinds of stuff that doesn't add up. So is Jerry uh like based on anybody you know, Greg? Oh loosely. There's a lot of me inside of Jerry Barkley. Okay. But Jerry's a lot smarter than me. Jerry has the benefit of an editor and do overs. In real life, I have no such benefits. So Jerry, Jerry gets to learn from my mistakes. Gotcha. Good for Jerry. Yeah. Okay, man. So, so uh, is Jerry involved in trying to prevent a truck full of explosives from blowing no. up? No, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. That's only the tip of the iceberg. Ah. Uh, our bad. The bad guy. The bad guys really do steal a truck. And I. And as an author, I had to figure out a credible way to make that work. And I found out about it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm so I'm doing my research on that and asking all my questions. And so whenever I go down one of those tracks, somebody always says, Greg, you're asking these things in public. You're going to be on some kind of a government watch list. <laughs> and my answer is always, every time, that's my opening. My answer is, my answer is, well, then for any of the dedicated professionals in our law enforcement agencies watching this discussion thread, you need to buy a copy of Virus Bomb and Bullseye Breach today for everybody in your department before it's too late because that's got my manifesto to take over the world. Somebody's going to really blow it up. I got well, you. yeah, you attack it with humor. Right, right. Some, so, really, I mean, some really deadly, nasty, serious stuff, but attack yeah. it with humor. But I'm interested that Jerry's a Christian. So yes, he is. As, as the character develops and the plot line advances, <laughs> Um, how does Jerry's faith enter into uh, his own character development in the plot line? He um, he's gonna get he gets tested pretty severely in Virus Bomb. Mm. He ends up he ends up um, having to face down some professional assassins, mm. and, and there's no other human being with him except for Jerry Barkley and. Um, mm. He has to say so he 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 asks God for some help and and um, God gives it not in anything overtly overtly um, supernatural okay but God gives him a way out and he takes it and he recognizes he recognizes that God's giving him a way out. Virus bomb is a secular story. There's no overt Christianity in virus bomb. Although if you're a Christian and you read closely, you'll recognize you'll nice. recognize the indicators. Oh, nice. There's um there's a whole lot of politics and religion inside virus bomb. There's a there's a Muslim young man whose father works for a bank in New York, and they end up relocating to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to be in the headquarters job. Mm -hmm. 
And a lot of people pick on this Muslim young man <clears throat> mercilessly. Mm. And that drives him into the arms of what he thinks is a terrorist organization bent on murder. Mm. And that's, that's heavy duty and ugly and stuff. And a lot of people question me for having something like that in this story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I live in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and there were a lot of young men who went off and tried to fight for terrorist organization, organizations in Africa and Syria. Mm. And they were recruited online by some, by, some of the, by some of these same nasty people. Gotcha. And so it, it makes sense that we should address this, this phenomenon mm -hmm. in fiction mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe help open some people's eyes to it. Yeah, because fiction always reflects life, right? I mean, the best fiction does. Think, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's amazing. Now, um, in Bullseye Breach, what's the, uh, what's the plot line there? Bullseye Breach takes place in 2013. So Virus Bomb is a little more current. Bullseye Breach is okay. 2013. And there's a, there's a large retailer named Bullseye Stores, and they have, they have – um, around 1,800 stores around the U.S. and 20,000 point-of-sale systems mm -hmm. spread out among their stores. Okay. And some, some overseas attackers figure out a way to attack bullseye stores across the Internet mm -hmm. and pollute these point-of-sale systems to, rec to send credit card numbers and zip codes back to the attackers back to the attackers collection points. Wow. So now the attackers collect all these all these millions, 40 million credit card numbers. Oh wow. And they put those up for sale on various underground web forums. Mm. Until a few creative people in the Twin Cities figure out a figure out a way to fight back. And that puts a stop to 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 those attackers. But oh, one of the cool. biggest one of the biggest obstacles um Jerry Barkley and his team have to overcome is is um skepticism from a lot of managers at Bullseye Stores who don't believe anybody could mount such an attack against a Fortune 500 retailer. <laughs> By the way, they're wrong. They were wrong. They're wrong <laughs> both in fiction and they're wrong in real life. Mm, so again, fiction is reflecting real life. So gotcha. yeah. So in working for Red Hat, how does your um, obviously you work for Red Hat by day and then you're uh, mm -hmm. an author by night. Mm -hmm. um, how does your faith come into play in the field of cybersecurity and doing what you do with Red Hat? It guides me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it guides me. I, I live in the business world. I, I right. am, if I were to get up in front of a group of customers and start quoting Bible verses, they would, they would throw me out of the room. Sure, absolutely. That's, that's, that's not the purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the meeting right. is to discuss whatever issues, tangible issues we need to discuss. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I use my, my faith gives me, gives me constraints that I need to adhere to. Mm. Sometimes it would be easy to just tell the customer what they want to hear and be done with it. Mm. That would just be easier. Let someone else clean up the mess, but yes. I can't do that. My, 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 uh, my God wouldn't let me get away with that kind of stuff. I would, mm. I would, I would pay a price for it. Now the Lord forgives us of our sins, but sure. there's a, there's a, there's a catch to forgiving you of your sins. <laughs> catch is when you ask for forgiveness, you got to mean it. It's not, it's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. free. Card. Yeah. You need to be sincere, not yeah. just uh, sorry yeah. you got caught. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so I cannot just, cross ethical boundaries. I just, I right. can't, I can't so, do it. So integrity, Greg, is one of your core values then. Um, it, and, and understanding that integrity is well, one of your core values keeps you let from me telling the you on customer. That. Wait, hang on, hang on. Once mm -hmm. in, in, integrity should be one of my core values. Uh -huh. And I try to make integrity one of my core values, but integrity is the Lord's core value and the Lord makes sure that I, that I adhere to it with, without, uh -huh his guidance, I would be, and, and this is, I know this for a fact. I'm not just saying that because that's right. what Christians say. Yes. Without, without that guidance, I would be off in the weeds somewhere and probably dead. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So really the Lord gifted you with divine integrity then so that you, <laughs> you can say to that customer, not what you think they want to hear in order to make the sale or improve the relationship or something but you do that right thing. How do you keep yourself refreshed in, in the Lord's gift to you of integrity or, or whatever else we're talking about here that God gives you with? I get in a lot of debates with people. Okay. I might be the, I, 
we're supposed to read and study the Bible, and we're supposed yes. to we're supposed to do that. Right. And and like every like most people I know, I don't do it enough. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I wish I, I could say I read the Bible every day, and I'm just fascinated by all the chapters. I wish I could say that, but yeah. my my Lord instructs me to be honest. And there there are there mm. are some there are, there are some chapters that that drive me crazy. <laughs> try, try to make sense out of Revelation without a whole bunch of commentary. Just try it, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. not as smart as Tim LaHaye. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Yeah. But what I do, I, I ended up I end up getting in these online forums where atheists like to hang out. Oh. And and um atheists and pagans and just name right. your name your other belief system. Right. And sometimes we, we get way, way, way deep in the weeds. Mm. And that forces me to do homework. And so oh. I do my homework and I and I come back and that, that sharpens my reasoning skills. And mm. I, I I don't think I've ever changed anybody's mind because I'm not that powerful. You know, that's a God thing. That's but really but I, I do sometimes get in and mix it up with people and I spend um I spend sometimes I spend a lot of late nights and lose a lot of sleep over it. Wow. Not like I lose a lot of sleep worrying. I lose a lot of sleep because I'm up and it's three o'clock in the morning and oh yeah, I gotta put this in and oh yeah, I gotta put this in. <laughs> I, I sleep till I start till I yeah, till I close my eyes and drool on my arm. <laughs> so you really have a passion for reaching people who are outside of a personal relationship with Christ and uh that that finds you in these in these forums and that really drives you in your Bible study to to improve your knowledge of the Bible and to become a better disciple so that you can incarnate Christ even more. Don't, Man, don't I, make me out to be a hero on that. <laughs> well, no, I just think it's absolutely fascinating because I've, you know, over the five years of this podcast, I've interviewed, I don't know how many thousands of people, but um, just so many fascinating people. And I'm always intrigued by the passion that God's put within them and where it comes from and how they give expression to it. So I'm really celebrating Greg Scott, right? You're <laughs> unique out of seven and a half or so billion people on the planet. So oh, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're all unique, but don't make my motives so pure. Sometimes it's just for me to find out stuff too. Sometimes mm. I use, sometimes I use that knowledge and I put that back into fiction. Sometimes I just find out stuff. So it's, I wish I could say I do it purely for the Lord's benefit because the Lord commanded me to, but right. that, would, that would not be true. Right. I got you. Well, Hey, Greg, we're all living, trying to figure out life here east of Eden. Right. So you betcha. Uh, there's, there's, we're, we're maybe 99 and 44, 100 percent pure, but never, <laughs> never a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. those of you who are, are bald headed or gray headed like Greg and myself just got the ivory soap reference. Yeah. So <laughs> we're not sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners as, as it was explained. Yeah, absolutely. We do. So, uh, Working for Red Hat by day and then writing fiction by night. What are some of the challenges? And the, and then with this real passion to share Christ with people online, what uh, what are some of the challenges that you face personally, Greg, or professionally? Well, <coughs> sorry about the cough. That's all right. It's not a COVID nineteen cough. Yeah. <laughs> well, you yeah. have a chronic cough or a dry cough. If so, well, I I've had. It's asthma in my case. I've had a chronic cough or a dry cough since I was a long, a young, young man. Challenges at man. challenges at work trying to trying to trying to um, keep faith and work and professional. Right. Keep the, right. I got into a big debate one time at work in an online forum about Donald Trump and abortion. Donald okay. Trump versus Hillary Clinton and abortion. And why did you vote for Trump? And and when what kind of a what kind of a what kind of a woman hating, bigoted, pick your adjective would vote for Donald Trump? And I got into a big debate with with a lot of people about that who believe differently than I do. Okay. And that was a challenge because these are yeah. Right, there's some really 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 smart people that work at Red Hat and and. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of them. I mean, you might think I am because I know more about technology than most people. So like, here's most people with technology. Here's me. And right. here's some of the people at, at Red Hat. And, I understand. And, yep. And I got in this big debate 
about abortion with some of these people. Yeah. And my wife convinced me a long time ago. I, I was not born being a Christian. A lot of people a lot of people were baptized when they were five years old and they knew the Lord from growing up. Sure. I'm not one of them. I was 37 years old before I said yes to the, to Jesus. Wow. So let me ask Greg, how did you come to Christ as a 37 year old? Oh, that's a way better story than debates at work. I'll do that one. (laughs) No, I'm still interested in how faith gets expression at work, but tell me about how you came to Christ as a 37 year old. It's a lifelong story. Yeah. Yeah. it, and, you know, you remember snippets from when you were little. Mm-hmm. And there was a time when I was eight years old, mm. and we lived in Tucson, Arizona. Mm-hmm. And I had this Johnny Seven plastic ring that I'd gotten from a cereal box. Mm-hmm. When you're eight years old, cereal box toys are a big deal. This oh, Johnny yeah. Seven ring could decode all kinds of stuff. I could put secret messages in my little ring and keep it there. And, and, and the ring, I lost it. It fell off my finger. I didn't have it anymore. No, I was just bombed. Oh, that was devastating. It? Yeah. So I, so I stood there underneath the swing set that was about like 500 feet tall. Mm-hmm. When you're, you know, when you're this. And, sure. And, and um, I said, God, help me find this Johnny Seven ring. I'm supposed to pray to you. That's what they always tell me. Help, help me find this Johnny Seven ring. Where is it? And er, every kid in Arizona and Tucson, you, you walk barefooted because you just do. You walk sure. barefooted. And I felt this next to my toe. I felt something solid. And I reached down. I dug in the sand, in the dust. There's that ring stuck to my next to my right toe. Holy it was just cow. Like right there. It wasn't there before, and it was there afterwards. Mm. So then, um, that didn't, that lesson did not take. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool for the moment, but it didn't stick for a yeah, lifetime. I got yeah, you, man. The yeah, God but, of the Johnny seven ring. I'm loving yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. But I, you know, I, it stayed there in the back of my mind and brewed for, okay. for 30, for 20 some odd years. Yeah. There's like another time in 1993. Mm-hmm. And so I, I would have been 36 years old, I think 35, 36, somewhere in there. And we had these two German shepherds in our right here where I live in our house, mm-hmm. and they bugged me. They wanted they wanted me to take them out to go do their business. So I, I took them out, and there's a there's a city park, kind of a wooded area behind our house, and I took them out in this wooded area, mm-hmm. and and um, <clears throat> Hazel ran off somewhere. Hazel liked to go roll in dead stuff, and when she <laughs> rolls in dead stuff, you can smell her before you can see her because she's cause that's what dogs do. <laughs> Okay. And she rolled in something dead, and I could smell her coming back, and it was awful. Uh-huh. And um, people had been telling me, Greg, you got to accept Jesus in your life. Accept Jesus. And I was, you know, a huge skeptic. Okay. So I, I just, and there was nobody else in this park but me. I, I looked around. I was alone. So mm-hmm. I just started spouting off. I said, hey, God, hey, if you're, if you're so important, just show up right here. Come on, just show up. You and me. There's nobody else. Just show up. You know what? Carry some rocks and say something important. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was rather obscure. What yeah, happened? I was, I was really a, and and uh, finally after this, I said, "All right, here's the deal. If you're really real, if you're really real, you show up right here, right now. Otherwise, I'm never, I'm not going to believe it." Wow. And this voice in my right ear, uh-huh. like as if somebody were standing there, uh-huh. said, "You're not ready yet." Wow. True story. I and wow. there was no other human being in the woods anywhere near me but this voice you're not ready yet wow <laughs> and <laughs> i shut up <laughs> i shut up really fast you know you think <laughs> and I'll be, yeah and i all of a sudden the shadows and all the trees got really really long <laughs> and and because it was uh, dusky and yeah. and and i knew that if you know if, if somebody was in my ear saying you're not ready yet there was yeah. there must have been bad guys hiding behind every tree Wow! Oh, I I did what any gutsy, red-blooded American, strong, tough male guy would do. Yeah. <laughs> I ran home. Ran home, got your dogs, and went on. <laughs> yeah, I did. Hazel, come here. <laughs> yeah, I washed and I washed her off in the hose when I got home where it was safe before I let her in the house. Wow, man! Well, that's amazing to hear the audible voice of God, isn't it, yep. Greg? Oh, that was that was yeah, that stuck with me. Mm. And then um, a friend of ours, about a year later was a lot more rational, a lot more sane. And he gave, he um, gave me, he said, he said, I want you to come to this, um, to this, to this series of meetings, three Sundays in a row. Give me three Sundays in a row because 
Don Byerly is going to be at these houses. He's going to be speaking, and he's got stuff to say you might enjoy. Mm. So, all right, I'll go. What's you know what's to lose with a little bit of time? Well, Don Byerly teaches taught biology at Crown College here in the Twin Cities. Okay. And he no one had ever explained to me what how crucifixion works. Mm. I mean, I, I knew I knew the story. They they sure. put Jesus on the. I knew that story, but yeah, no one had ever explained why the Romans did it, or mm. or what it did to your body or how, how any of that happened. Mm. And then nobody, nobody ever made me realize the politics of the day. Yeah. Why would, why would Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John write these stories? Why would they go to mm -hmm. the trouble? Mm -hmm. So I spent three Sundays in a row listening to this. Mm -hmm. And after, after we got done, I, I couldn't be an agnostic anymore. How mm. can you, how can you deny the facts in front of your own eyes? Yeah, I'm the one that said I, I I was I was I was the guy who used to argue <clears throat> if you can't prove it if if it, if you can't test it, it doesn't matter it just it's just stuff that somebody made up right. maybe it's true maybe it's not but it's all random I was the guy that argued that stuff mm. that's some pretty good arguments too mm. apparently why I get in and get in and mix it up with atheists today yeah and but then <laughs> when when God <laughs> showed right. up and spoke in your right ear and said that you're was, not ready was, yet. Yeah, that was that was that was a big man. Deal. And then <laughs> took you about a year later to hear this professor. Yeah. Then you got ready and you came to a personal relationship with. Christ. I was I was a hard case. There was a lot of people that worked on me. When I when I said yes to Jesus in October of of 1994, my wife was back in the bedroom crying. Wow. She she heard me say yes. Oh, I, praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. Greg Scott is my guest today on Faith Positive Radio. He is an IT cybersecurity specialist, and he's also a fiction author. Who knew? He's written a couple of books, Bullseye Breach and Virus Bomb, both of which feature Jerry Barkley, who's a Christian cybersecurity guy. Imagine that. And uh, so the stories are, are really, really, they draw you in. There's it's fiction, but it reflects today's world enough to where you're really going to be interested in reading these two amazing books. And if you've also been intrigued by our conversation today with Greg Scott about how he came to Christ and how he reaches out to people who have yet to come to Christ and, and start a personal relationship, you can reach him through his website at dgregscott.com. Chuck's done a great job of putting that web address on uh, Greg Scott's page on our website, getpositive.today. So go there, uh, check it out. You can actually, there's a contact form there at dgregscott.com. You can reach out to Greg and talk to him about what it's like to come to Christ and to uh, hear the audible voice of God and how you too can act on your passion for helping others come to Christ from around the world. Greg, Faith Positive Nation always wants to know, buddy, from, uh, from our guest about a favorite Bible verse or Bible passage. Have you got one for us? I sure do. I got to put my reading glasses on so I can see it. <laughs> oh, I understand. <laughs> my eyes aren't what they used to be, and things get all blurry sometimes, especially right. when it's close up. Special, little. Yeah, um, I understand. This is a conspiracy theory, too. You'll, you, you guys will like this. The, um, the people that do reading glasses, Okay. They're in cahoots with the people that do fonts. Yeah. <laughs> There's an inverse corollary, right? Fonts get a little smaller, little <laughs> and then and then the read you got to buy more reading glasses. So they're out. There's money. <laughs> uh, that's right. Well, that, that's why I read Kindle. I can adjust the font size to whatever I want. <laughs> oh, I love those big fonts. You yeah, bet. Yeah, really. Bet. Um, Matthew 28 verse 19. What else would it be for an IT guy, right? Mm. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then I add my little twist at the end. I say, use the internet. Oh, wow. What an amazing a, way to make disciples, right? Yeah. We did a big remodeling project at our church and uh, 10, 10 years ago, and I, I got into it with some people about wiring this church up with, with cat five and, and so right. we can have network drops everywhere. Sure. And so I, I got one, we have to, we have to do our label makers. We label the, the numbers on all the outlets. So I, sure. I, lay, I, I, I spelled that out and glued that onto the, onto the cover on our patch panel. So it's right there in the basement. Oh man, that's awesome. Matthew twenty eight nineteen, and the internet sure makes it possible for us to make disciples of all nations. I absolutely love it. Greg Scott is my guest today. Faith Positive Nation. Go to his website, dgregscott.com. 
learn more about a couple of books that feature Jerry Barkley, Bullseye Breach, and Virus Bomb. And then also reach out to Craig to find out more about his fascinating story about how he came to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Craig, thank you so much for this time today, man. I'm absolutely intrigued by you and your books. God's blessings on you and Tina and your incredible ministry. Thank you so much, Craig. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.